Hey everyone, Cursed Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks assisted, and here we are with Zelix Haunted One, a horror token themed mill deck. This is one of our donation decks of the week, and this comes from Royal Beast, who says, Hey Curse, giving the mill deck another shot, this time transitioning from a spell slinger setup to one with little more creatures. The aim is to draw a discard a lot and to use my enchantments to trigger milling and eventually combo off with a finisher. My challenge is winning with mil uh, milling opponents out. Goldfishing the deck seems to go smoothly, but it's feeling a bit bland, like it's missing something. Any suggestions or tips to spice things up would be awesome. Let me know what you think. Absolutely, Royal Beast. This is a very much so like an advanced version of a standard, you know, uh, traditional mill deck in black blue mill control with a bit of horror interaction that I think is interesting and I'm gonna have some pretty I don't know let's say reasonable let's say understandable additions to make and then I'm gonna give you some spice some like raw jank like you've never seen it before that when you win with this deck oh you win in a way that is just absolutely ridiculous so look forward for that but for first, let's start off looking at our commander and what it's doing. If you'd like to take a look at the deck list we're talking about today, or if you'd like to submit your own deck list to me so that I can make a video assisting your deck, please check the video description down below. So, Zelix Sanity Layer, a 2-3 three for 3 horror in blue. They have three abilities. The first one, Hive Mind, whenever a player mills one or more creature cards, you create a 1-1 one, one black horror creature token. Then they have a second ability for one in a tap, uh, target player mills three cards. And finally, you get background, which means we have a background as a second commander, giving us a second color. Of course, here it is Haunted One. Haunted One is black, giving black to our commander. Commander creatures you own uh, have, whenever this creature becomes tapped, it and other creatures you control share a creature type with it. They all get plus two, plus O, oh, and gain undying until end of turn. Now, something that's obviously worth noting right away is that the undying given to tokens is somewhat meaningless. And I think that is where the first little hiccup of the deck exists, right? We have a deck who, if we come here and we'll go to subtype, we can see that when it comes to horrors, we have six horrors in the deck, which is low. The rest of our horrors that Haunted One affects are Zelix's, uh, <laughs> I was almost gonna say brood. Uh, let's just say those horror creature tokens. And those tokens don't use basically a third of what Haunted One does. I will suggest, before going into it, if I was going to sit here and if I had like my first kind of critique, um, I would say that this is taking a commander that's meant to be more of a creature commander, like a, a kindred horror deck, especially a deck with a lot of creatures, and trying to turn it into a control deck. And I think, I think we, we're kind of missing that point. I don't think that's much of a problem, but it does kind of look into the deck, especially with the low amount of horrors, and it kind of makes a lot of our creatures somewhat not on theme, right? We're looking here, and Gollum, Gollum is a horror, but not a very good horror. A horror that has nothing to do with Mill, it's just a cute little game, and though uh, a friend of mine really enjoys this, um, I do not. I don't think it's a great card, if not for the cutest. It does nothing for you. Uh, likewise, Letter Shredder on the opposite end is a creature that is not a horror, but is decently strong. Doesn't do a lot for us, otherwise being just kind of a cool inclusion, but otherwise, like, sure. I think the half of the deck that is also the strongest is the half that just benefits from cards like Braids, Letter, Letter Shredder, you know, Wonder, to an extent, Hell's Caretaker, to an extent, and is just like kind of a hard control deck. And I really do like it. And uh, a lot of my additions that are more sound will lean into that direction. 37 lands and a lot of our spells are at two mana. I think this is fine. This is kind of what we're working with. It's low to the ground, it's cute. 
Um, I think we're kind of low on immediate card draw. We have a lot of like long-term card draw that I really like, but that'll be in additions. And I think we don't have a lot of removal either that will also be in additions. I think also, uh, this, is, this is a pet peeve, but this is just me. Uh, Frantic Search is not zero mana, right? I get that, uh, that it's being marked as zero mana because you get your lands back, but it's not actually zero mana. I could, I could see how Lethal Scheme is zero mana because of the Convoke, like I'm fine seeing it that way, but we have to remember that Frantic Search will never be zero mana. It will always be three mana, and hopefully we can get something back with it. Otherwise, honestly, as the deck as is, if we kind of don't look too much at the creatures, I really like how it is. I think it's really, really strong. It has a lot of really fun things. Cards like Psionic Ritual are incredibly strong. Breach the Multiverse are, is very, very strong. And I think like these finishers, Extravagant Replication even, like there's a lot here that I really, really like and I think would be just fine as a deck. If you just cleaned up the creatures, maybe moved in things like, you know, the Visions for Beyond, Tragic Slip, kind of solve those immediate problems that I might have, and you'd have a pretty decent deck here. But that's not jank, and we came here for jank. I hope you'll be okay. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the deck itself because honestly, it like I just said, it's just good. I'm gonna, let, let's go straight into additions and let's see what I have in store for you. All right, so let's do the stuff that just makes sense. And we're gonna talk about this as if this is the main additions for the deck. So the first two cards I think absolutely need to be in here are Trinket Mage and Tribute Mage. Um, both of these cards are just instrumental at picking up very, very relevant artifacts. In tri uh, Trinket Mage gets us Altar of the Brood or Skull Clan. Alder of the Brood is almost an infinite combo with your uh, commander if, at, if, if the cards align, right? If you're playing against decks that have a lot of uh, creatures, like 30 plus, 40 plus, it's possible that Alter of the Brood and your commander will mill out chunks of their deck at a time because every time they mill a creature, you get another creature and you get another three card chance to mill. So Altar of the Brood is so strong you want it every game. Skull Clamp, of course, works so well with our horrors that I just want it around as well. Uh, then obviously in the two slot, Altar of Dementia is in for a lot of combos. Mesmeric Orb is an insane card. Mind Crank is very good. Having these two creatures is just going to be very, very good for us and just allow us to do so, so much. So I, I want those in no matter what. Actually, before I continue, I want to take a moment and just say, uh, if you were going to make a bit more of a controlling version of Zelix with Mill as your win condition, I would actually, oh, it doesn't go to, yes. Uh, I would actually not use Haunted One. I would use, uh, let's see what it's called, Scion, uh, is there gonna be 30 cards? No. Scion of Halaster, Halaster. Uh, commander creatures you control have first time you draw a card each turn. Instead, look at the top two cards of your library, one in the graveyard, one back on top, and then draw a card. Now, this also gets a lot better if you have bunches of creatures, because then that will, uh, that will trigger your commander almost repeatedly. But generally, this is just a good card with your commander out that your first draw is basically a surveil to kind of. And I think that is a nice thing to have in a deck like this. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, two cards that are represented with this one card, Pongify and Rapid Hybridization are the best removal in your colors. After that, you could play Reality Shift or, um, I mean, a lot, like, I, I think I think even uh, Fatal Push, but Pongify and Rapid Hybridization are both one mana blue cards that destroy a creature and make a 3-3. And in, in your setup with the control, I really want you be, to be able to point at things and destroy them. There's just gonna be some commanders or some board states that you really wanna do something with, and I think these are the solutions there. Um, the other one is card draw, and I do feel the two I want is Rowan Grim Search and probably Knight's Whisper. The thing is, is your deck is full of really, really good 
uh, long-term draw cards like Ristic Study, like Mystic Remora, like Black Market Connections. Like these, these are very, very strong cards, but they don't, they don't immediately get you the value. If your opponents are foolish, Ristic Study and uh, Mystic Remora will immediately get you the uh, value, but something like Rowan's Grim Search that digs four cards deep, right? And then uh, immediately, it actually draws you, uh, sorry, digs six cards potentially if you sacrifice uh, the horror token for the bargain. It's just really, really good, refills you back to a state that you can deal with like whatever's on the board, but also is really good when an opponent is playing a spell you really want to counter and you want to dig that six to get that counter spell and move on. So if not Knight's Whisper, because maybe two mana draw two, lose two isn't as good as you want, Rowan's Grim Search feels very, very good here and a really, really easy addition. So let's, that, that's enough of just like stuff that makes sense. Let's get into some jank. Not full jank. Let's ease in with a good Akulon, or Achulon if you prefer. This is a card that I think is so, so profoundly funny. I really, really like this. It is a one card win condition in only the worst ways. This is, doesn't work as mill traditionally, but as some cards here are going to have a habit of uh, having, this does work really well with Altar of Dementia. The whole idea is at the end of your end step, you double the number of Akulons or Chulons that you have, as long as there's enough creatures in your opponent's graveyard. And the thing is, what I really like is unlike other black cards that used to work like this, you don't lose, it's not like a cumulative upkeep card, which is how they used to work, where once you can't pay the price, you lose all of them. This doesn't work like this. You get to keep as many of these as you want, as long, uh, well, as long as there's no board clear, right? And as they grow one after another, growing off the other horrors, the other crabs, oozes, if you may, uh, that you have laying around, you can then in one go sacrifice a bunch of them to alter of dementia. Now, do note, as you sacrifice them, the other ones get smaller, but once you hit the number where they're like 12 or 13 power each, the mills will work and the mill as you mill you like let one resolve after another you're pretty likely to hit a creature which will come out and replace the power lost by the first one on the other coulons if that makes sense i'm just going to call them a coulons i don't know what they are what they are is disgusting and i absolutely love them they're a bit optimistic to play, I will say, or ambitious because you have to get to your end step. But over two or three turns, you get a lot of these. If you were absolutely crazy, you would play Populate with this, but I don't I don't know how sound that is, so I'm not gonna suggest it. The next kind of maybe not too crazy card to add in, uh, once again, both this is less of a win condition and more of a cute card that I think is very good, is Deep Muck Desperado, a card that's recently been put out. It's a Homerid, it's an underwater creature, you know I love that. Uh, and this is whenever you uh, commit a crime, each opponent mills three. So what I really, really like about this is it tr can be triggered off of your commander. Now, is this crazy good? No, but it does enable you to easily mill more and more of your opponent's uh, decks. And when you use your commander or your other spells, like let's say uh, proactively or also intelligently, you can probably trigger this two to three times per turn cycle. And that's a lot of cards being milled. Remember this triggers off removal, counter magic, uh, targeting your opponent's cards, even if they're in the graveyard, such as with the Akulon. Uh, this just will trigger very, very often and very, very easily in a control deck. So I think this this card alone will just generate so much mill. And as a 2-4, it's kind of hard to deal with. I like the commit a crime mechanic, and I think in this deck, it's going to be very, very strong. Lord of the Forsaken is a four, six mana Flying Trample Demon with two abilities. The first one is for black, sacrifice another creature, target player mills three, and then pay one life, add a colorless, spend this mana only to cast a spell from your graveyard. Now I'm pretty sure we don't really have spells from our graveyard, but that first ability is pretty attractive because for one black mana, it turns our horrors into a mill three. 
Now, it mills only one player, but of course, if we then, you know, mill over a creature, we will get a 1-1 one, one in return, kind of replacing the 1-1 one, one that we lost. All we are is down one black mana. If you have an army of horror tokens, even six, tapping six black mana and then milling 30 cards in bits of three is really, really good. Something to remember is the way our commander works is we do not want to mill in one go because we'll only get one creature out of that. So when we mill in threes, we have a higher chance of getting more and more creatures. Now you might say, but cursed, I don't have six black mana. In fact, I don't want to pay six black mana. How can I make this card good? <laughs> Uh, well, there's another card called Carnival of Souls. Carnival of Souls says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you lose one life and add a black mana. And herein we have a janky combo. We create 1-1 one, one horror creatures, we get one black mana, we spend that black mana to sacrifice the creature, to mill three, we hope to hit a creature, it comes into, uh, we create a horror, add a black mana, lose a life, ad nauseum. Is this good? Goodness, I don't know. <laughs> but isn't that really, really funny? I think reasonably, this card is already pretty good in a deck like this. Your ability to interact with your opponents and generate extra black mana for more interaction is by itself going to be very, very good. It does enable your opponents to burn you out, but especially on turns where it really matters to cast the right spells, or the right abilities, it, you know, like having that extra bunch of mana you can get throughout the turn is going to be very, very worthwhile. Is this combo going to win you games? I'm not sure. I think objectively what? So you need 10 triggers. So you need 30 triggers basically to mill out an opponent. That's 30 life. That is the majority of your life. You might absolutely die in the process but i think it'll be really fun to try i will also note that um if you have life gain of some kind i'm not sure what you'd put in here but if you had life gain of some kind that would negate this problem and it would be a very very nice infinite provided your opponents have enough creatures in their decks all right let's look at another direction let's talk about phyrexian altar something that somewhat also works with Lord of the Forsaken. The trade is, of course, with Phyrexian Altar, we sacrifice two of our horrors, one to generate the black mana, the other one to then mill three. Ideally, we get a creature out of it uh, through the mill and get a horror back, but we are going to be down one creature, one horror every time. And if we don't mill over a, horror, uh, a creature, we are down two horrors, which can be really, really tough. Sure, if you have like 20 horrors, you probably can mill an opponent out, but it's worth kind of considering the fact that um, if you have 20 horrors, you probably should have win the, won the game. So instead of with Brexian uh, Altar, I want to talk about Intruder Alarm. Something I think that is a lot more straightforward. Now, Intruder Alarm, recently reprinted, let's look at the new art. Oh, how so fancy. Um, it says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you untap all creatures. When we So let's say we tap our commander, we mill three, we mill a creature, and then a horror comes back in, untapping our commander. Once again, we're milling in packets of three, and then we can use Phyrexian Altar to sacrifice for that card, uh, sacrifice that card for a mana. And at this point, Ashnod, Ashnod's Altar also works. I probably should have. It's, I believe it's already in the deck, so let me, before I say that, confirm. Um, oops. And no, Ashnod's Altar is not in the deck. So you could play both uh, in this specific combo. It wouldn't work with the Lord of the Forsaken combo, a very real combo. But the Phyrexian Altar or, or Ashnod's Altar will both get you enough mana to use your commander again with Intruder Alarm. Once again, if you are constantly, constantly hitting creatures, you will mill your opponents out. I will say... <laughs> On the realistic side of these cards, Intruder Alarm is going to be very good by itself because just as you have mana to mill your opponents out, you're going to get lucky, creatures are going to come into play, you're going to constantly be untapping your commander and constantly getting in for like a three, like mill three, mill three, 
mil three. And I think that's really going to add up just your incidental triggers and get you enough horrors to do something else with. But its ability to pseudo combo off with Phyrexian Altar or um, Ashnod's Altar is really, really impressive, especially with Ashnod's Altar because then it's two, e uh, with Ashnod's Altar, each sacrifice fuels two of your commander's abilities. So what you can do is if your opponents are playing multiple creatures in a turn, or they have an ability that like triggers and makes a creature and then triggers and makes a cre makes another creature, there's tons of those, I don't wanna go through them, but uh, you can use Ashnod's Altar to create two mana, colorless, use your commander, and then even if you don't get another creature in play, you will, once the other creature comes in, you'll untap your commander, get another one. Sorry, I'm getting into the weeds of this, but this is the kind of episode it is. It's jank combos, and I'm here for it. Speaking of jank combos, let's talk about Altar of Dementia. And we're coming to peak jankness. This is the point that I think we're getting ridiculous. And I want to talk about Coat of Arms. Coat of Arms is in the sideboard. Notably, I think the idea was thinking of this as a... Um, what would, what would we call this? Like an aggro card? But I'm going to suggest not using this as an aggro card. Instead, I'm going to suggest using it as a combo card with Altar of Dementia. This is the same idea as Ukulan, where we're going to have, let's say, six to seven horror tokens, right? And then we're going to use, uh, and those are just one ones, but with Coat of Arms, they are going to be with seven of them, they're gonna get plus six, so they're going to be seven sevens. That makes sense, right? Yeah. They're going to be, uh, it's basically you count the number of horrors and you subtract one because it doesn't give itself the bonus. So with six horrors, at least, you have seven sevens, which means with Altar of Dementia, they sacrifice to mill seven. I don't really like the chances of hitting a creature when we mill three, but I like it a lot more when we mill seven. That's not including the idea of like if we have more, because I'm not even. I was. I said six uh, tokens. With then our commander goes in, makes them actually eight eights. And if you have other ones, like you can have them as ten tenth. And once you're milling ten per creature, your chances to flip and hit a creature are so high. Like even low creature decks will eventually have more than, like. What is it? If they have 10 creatures in their deck, milling 10 all is, is about the same to guarantee that you're gonna mill a creature and get a creature, bringing all your horrors back to the same power level and doing it again. I think this is the most realistic of the jank combos. Coat of Arms is basically just free. It's so, so close to being in your deck, it's in the sideboard. And I don't know if you already know this and you just, uh, and I just didn't think of it, but I think this is a very, very good combo and a very realistic combo. I think with the setup that you can build a horror army, uh, have Altar of Dementia, especially with Trophy Mage, and then slam Coat of Arms, you're probably going to win the game almost immediately, I think. The only ways they kind of interact with you is with counter magic or removal on the stack. And for that reason, what I would suggest is if you're using all your mana for Coat of Arms, is that I would just wait a turn cycle. I would slam Coat of Arms and then I wouldn't do anything. If someone wipes the board or like interacts with Coat of Arms or anything like that, sure, then try to go off. Uh, but there's no reason to not wait until you have Counterspell backup. It'll probably only work once or twice before your opponents get used to it, but like it'll be an amazing once or twice. And that's not even just including the fact that all your horrors can attack for tons and tons of damage really, really easily. And yeah, that's gonna be great. But what about something even jankier? What about something so janky it would fundamentally change how the deck works? What if an Altar of Dimension dementia co uh, combo that's so bad and so ridiculous that you just can't say no to it? What if instead of Haunted One, we use Master Ship? Very famous TV show. This one says that your commander uh, enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. And it says the creatures you uh, control while your commander is out also come in with an additional plus one plus one counter. Now I know what you're thinking. You might be cursed. Hold on. That just makes our horror tokens two twos. If our horror tokens are two twos, we're milling for less than three. And you just told me you didn't like three. So what's going on? 
Well, we have a much more fun card we're gonna combo in now that we've gone from blue, uh, blue black to blue green, and that creature is Essence of the Wild. We are peak jankiness. This is as high of spice you can get. This is the greatest thing. They use this kind of spice to like map the universe in Dune. This is what I'm talking about. Essence of the Wild says that your creatures enter the battlefield as a copy of Essence of the Wild, which means that your horrors come in as seven sevens because of the plus one plus one counter. And I said before, sevens is seven is like a number I want to hit. So all of a sudden your creatures are milling seven and your chances of hitting a creature in a deck that has a reasonable amount of creatures when you mill this way are pretty high. So it's a simple three card combo. Uh, your commander, <laughs> altar of dementia, and a six drop called essence of the wild. No one will ever ever you know, make fun of you, you will have the best luck for the rest of your life. And honestly, I'd probably take apart the deck after I did that because it's kind of peaked once you've done it once. More realistically, uh, if that interests you at all, I think a blue-green version of Zelix with Al uh, Altar of Dementia or Self Mill with green or plus one plus one counters is very real to the point that I might actually seriously consider building it because I do have these cards. Um, is it good? I don't know, but <laughs> like how many green horrors are there? I can't even imagine there. Let's see. Uh, horror. I, I want to know so, so badly, uh, including green. There are some, yep. There's definitely, there's 25 horrors you can play. What a, <laughs> what a delightful deck. I think this could be a really, really fun deck. But at that point, we're going too far. Perhaps someone might be interested in me building that deck for them. Perhaps I'll build it for myself. But at the moment, those are my suggestions. I know I got a little silly with it. I hope that's not too bad. I really think the deck itself as a whole is really, really good. If you wanted to keep the shape of this deck, I would start by cutting Gollum, cutting Lightness Looter, cutting a lot of these creatures that don't directly work with our theme. Even Hell's Caretaker feels a bit cute when, you know, we just don't have that many creatures to reanimate from our graveyard, so there's a very low chance of flipping them. Um, even Wonder and Undead Alchemist feel cute because they require so much work to get going. I think I would cut basically all of those and I would, the, the good advice would be I would once again bring in the Trophy Mage, the um, Trinket Mage, Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, uh, Rowan's Grim Search, and Knight's Whisper. That's probably where I would start. Maybe uh, both Altar of Phyrexia or Phyrexian Altar and Ashnod's Altar would also be good. Uh, and then Coat of Arms. That would be, I think, the more straightforward version of this deck, but I hope you try some of the jank I suggested. And think of Ukulan, what a cool card. Thank you so much, Royal Beast, for sending me this deck. This is a hilarious deck, and I really like it, and I hope to see more of these background commanders because they're really, really cool. All right, <laughs> good luck and happy deck building. Thank you so much for watching. This video is brought to you by viewers like you and people on my Patreon. If you'd like to send me another draft of this deck, or any deck, there is a link in the video description down below. And if you'd like to make your deck one of my donation decks I work on, there is a link there too. Finally, if you'd like to like, comment, subscribe, I would be very appreciative. It helps the channel quite a bit. Thank you and good luck in brewing and building.